<laughs> Why me? Why me? Just go read this right now. I'm not I'm not joking. I'm not joking, bitch. Guys. 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 Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, it's very late. I'm very tired, but welcome to the video. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? Where have you bloody been? Recently, I read Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie, and I was obsessed with it. And I realized I just want to read murder mysteries for a week. And so that's what I've decided to do. And <laughs> I'm just making it into a video to justify, you know, reading it all in a week. I just loved the whole suspense of it. I loved the clues. I loved kind of the mystery, putting the puzzle pieces together. I used to love playing Nancy Drew as a kid and I just love kind of the puzzle element of that. And obviously Nancy Drew kind of based, the games are based on the books. And so I, I'm just so excited to read mystery novels. So today, I went to an event at Waterstones Leeds with a bunch of mystery writers and one of the authors there was an author I've been wanting to read for the longest time. So her book that's just come out is The Guest List. This is by Lucy Foley, she's the author who was there. I'll put in a few clips now of the event. <laughs> Yo, I just hit 2k. Hang on, I'm gonna go over here so no one can hear me. I just hit 2k and I'm in Waterstones. <laughs> Couldn't get any more fitting. <laughs> oh wait, hang on. My hand was over the microphone. I just hit 2k in case you didn't hear. And we're in Waterstones. <laughs> oh my god, I was like, I saw that I'd hit, my, my boyfriend texted me that we hit 2k um, when the authors were speaking and I saw it and I like, it took all my power not to scream. I'm so happy. So I'm gonna go get some pizza to celebrate. <laughs> well, I was getting the pizza anyway, but like it's now celebratory pizza. <laughs> and this book is set on a remote island in Ireland, the country, and someone is murdered at the wedding party. And it's kind of all the group coming together and you go to try and figure out who did it. She read the first page of this. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed already. I cannot wait to read all this. I don't know if it was a mistake to have filmed this intro to this video while I'm slightly tired, but we're just rolling with it. Also, a possibility to read this week is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This was like her big seller book. It's a similar premise in the sense that it takes part in a remote lodge in a Scottish wilderness, very remote locations. I think most mysteries have very remote locations. These are two I definitely want to get to. I think I'm going to start with the guest list because it's just come out and I want to be on that hype. You know? Then, in terms of other books that I have lying about, I recently bought The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson, which is a YA mystery novel and part of a series of second in the series. I really enjoyed the first in the series. This is set at a boarding school where it's kind of notorious for murders happening and our main character wants to solve those murders. And so I think like a bit of YA this week might be a good break in terms of like breaking up the adult novels that I've got going on. So that's what I want to read. And then I'm going to be reading a uh, ebook as we go along. And the ebook is, if you give me a second, <laughs> it's The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. So I have decided to read all of Agatha Christie's books. Um, I just know I'm obsessed with it and it's basically all the audiobooks I'm going to be listening to for the foreseeable future. But um, on script, this is the first book in the um in her kind of series of books and uh it doesn't have an audiobook on script i think literally almost every other book does oh my god i was <laughs> in my most recent vlog before this one which was me using your tips to read faster and read more a big tip of that was have an ebook which you were always going to read when you're out and about and i never done that i barely ever read ebooks but it increased my reading so much and I was getting through books way quicker than I would have done otherwise. So I think it's definitely gonna be something that I carry on doing, you know, having an ebook that I read. And so I definitely wanted to implement it in this video. So I'm gonna be reading The Mysterious Affair of Styles. I've actually started it, I'm only like 7% in. I've barely read it. I've read like, I read it whilst drying my hair yesterday. That's all I've read. So not really anything. So I'm gonna be reading that while I'm out and about. And then I haven't got an audiobook yet. I believe the audiobook for that actually is on YouTube, so I might just use that. These are the books that I definitely, oh my god, please. These are the books that I definitely want to try and get to this week. I think 
I'll be able to read them quite quickly just because of the nature of the book. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go read. I'm going to get in bed. It's really late. It's like midnight. <laughs> but I'm going to go read, like, I think just the first few pages of this just to get a taste of the story. And then I'll actually read it, start reading it properly tomorrow. And I'll check in once I've got some, once I've got some thoughts. Once I've got some thoughts. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. So, okay, this book is so good. <laughs> well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. I don't know if I gave you a good description of this book because I think this intro to the video was bad. It was bad, I was very tired. So in this, we are at a wedding on a really isolated island off the coast of the country island. And we find out on the first page that um, someone has found a body. That's it. So we we start off finding out that someone has died and we have flashbacks to after that throughout the book. But then the rest of the book starts from the day before the wedding. And so the point I'm at now, I'm about halfway through the book. And um, at the point I'm at now, we have gotten to the morning of the wedding. So we've gone through all of the day previous and some kind of shenanigans went down at the wedding dinner. And now we're on the morning of the wedding. I, okay. Whew. I feel so good about reading this because sometimes with these videos recently I've been like hitting mini slumps but I'm so excited to read it at the moment I think that's what kind of mi murder mysteries do to you like you just want to find out what's going on I still don't know who's been murdered that still hasn't been revealed and so I could be suspecting someone that's died <laughs> um, although I have my suspicions on who's died but I might be wrong I feel like she's really good at setting uh, showing how isolated we are how extreme the weather is because i think that's going to play a part without going there was lightning another bolt of lightning the rain poured down whatever like really uh, really over the top descriptions of the weather or whatever it's more how maybe the air feels when the weather's really bad or the atmosphere or something like that she's really good at setting you in that weather without being like spending a whole page going on what the weather's like do you know what i mean secondly a lot of the characters in this, not really many of them are likeable, but she does it really well, where they're not cardboard cutout villains. And I think she spoke about this um, at the talk. You know, they they all have their motivations and you can see how they all think they're doing the right thing. You can see how they all think they're in the right, but you can see that they're not. So uh, they're all very posh characters in this. And a lot of the boys, a lot of the men, sorry, from the groom side all went to like a private school together that was pretty messed up and had a lot of really weird initiations. And um, there was like something called survival where you'd be blindfolded like as a 10 year old and gone and put out miles from the school and you have to find your own way back in the middle of the night kind of thing. And they're all kind of like, yeah, it was great, it built character. And they're all doing really weird stuff to each other. I think that's gonna be, it's gonna be really interesting to see where the story goes in relation to them. We have one character, Hannah, who is the wife of the male best friend of the bride and they have kind of a thing going on. And Hannah's kind of like our eyes into what's going on. She's, she's seemingly the only normal one. Um, and she's like the only character we can really truly like. <laughs> But I think it helps that you have at least that one character who's kind of normal when everything, everyone else is these massive personalities. And I have no idea who's committed the murder. I have no clue because, yo, like, <laughs> everyone has some weird shit going on. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. Everyone has some messed up backstory. We don't know what they are yet. We're starting to get hints of what each person's like weird thing is. I just think like it's gonna get weirder and darker as it goes along and it's so good. I think this is gonna be like a four or five. Five? Oh my God, that's so bad. I haven't been giving out many five stars so I'm a bit like, <laughs> but I feel really good about it and um, I'm just really enjoying the reading experience. I'm getting more and more into it and <laughs> I just want to find out what's going on. I just want to find out what's going on. So um, yeah, that's that. And then in terms of The Mysterious Affair at Stars by Agatha Christie, I've been listening to that on audiobook and then reading 
some of the ebook as well and I'm about 80 pages into that and it's only like 230 pages so I'm happy with the progress I've made on that as well. I just I haven't read a book like this where I haven't liked so many of the characters and been fine with it in a long time and the suspense is just like building every chapter every chapter is getting more tense and I just want to find out what's happening. I was like do I really have to film this or can I just read more? So I just finished it and I'm giving it five stars. <laughs> Yo, I'm back. <laughs> guys, 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 guys. It was so good. So I didn't predict. Well, here's the thing. There's only a certain number of suspects. And so every time with a murder mystery, like in your head, you're going back and forth going, it could be this person, or oh, but it could be that person, or oh, but it could be that person. And like, so in your head, you kind of exhaust all the possibilities, but I didn't realize exactly what was gonna happen. And I didn't predict who was actually gonna do it. So um, yeah, the hunch I had for a long time was completely wrong. <laughs> the person who I thought was gonna commit the murder was actually the person who turned out to be killed. Wait a minute. I'm figuring this out. I'm like Scooby and Shaggy, I'm solving a mystery. That's not spoiling anything, but like, that's what I thought was gonna happen, so I got it completely the wrong way around. She crafts the pace of the book so well. The reveals, they were, they were so many, basically we follow a lot of different POVs. We follow the plus one, the wedding planner, the bride, the best man, the maid of honor, the bridesmaid. I think that's it. Um, so we follow each of their perspectives, their POVs, and each of them kind of has a secret that is revealed. And the secrets that are revealed, <laughs> I was gagged. I was gagged. Yes! <laughs> Some had me so angry. Some had me like so sad and like heartbroken. It was crazy. It was a crazy ass time. And some of them, you think you find out what their secret is and then you find out that's not their secret. They've got a darker secret. It's, this was so good. It was so good. And I am doing my job wrong if I don't get some of you to pick this up. I need you to be down in the comments below telling me Megan, I'm gonna pick it up because I just need to talk to you all about it. Oh my god, I want you all to read. If you're sitting there thinking, I might fancy a bit of murder mystery, just go read this right now. I'm not I'm not joking. I'm not joking, bitch! I'm not joking. Like I need to hear more people's opinions. My friend Elise, who came to the um event with me, she went and then bought it afterwards and has read it as well. And we are both just shook and everyone's so shady in it, and you really don't know who it's gonna be. So yeah, five stars. I'm so happy that I've read another five star. Like I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so because I've been struggling um, so far this year. But this was incredible. It was incredible, and I need you all to go pick it up right now. Update: I finished today the mysterious affair at Styles, and here's the thing: I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm gonna give it three stars. It was fine. It was not. It was not nothing compared to uh, Murder on the Express. Like, no. I feel like it was kind of Agatha Christie testing the waters out of what she could get away with, how adventurously she could write, because it's kind of a basic story. It's an old woman being killed in her home by a member of her family with some poison, you know, in a big rich home. Like, it ain't, it ain't that exciting. We haven't got a really, you know, crazy plot here. But it was just fine. I liked the twist at the end. Um, I don't know how long this kind of carries on for, but it was narrated from this other character's perspective. And I didn't really like that element of it. I prefer when they are written in the third person perspective. That's how I think Murder on the Orient Express was narrated. And I think it just suits the story better rather than this guy, like, supposedly narrating the accounts of what happened. Because I feel like it um, casts, I still can't pronounce his name, Praro? <laughs> It's so embarrassing. Um, it cast him as a more of a minor character when when it's third person, he's he's a bigger character. But I think it's still an enjoyable story. And if you like me, want to listen, uh, want to read Agatha Christie's books in order, then I mean the audiobook is free on YouTube. We finished the first two books for the video, 
it's going great. I feel like I've read loads. <laughs> so I'm going to start two more books. The first of which I decided to go with next for physically is The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. So this is the second in the Truly Devious series. In this we follow Stevie who is attending a boarding school where there were murders in the 1930s, unsolved murders, and she is going there essentially to try and solve the murders. Or that's what she's interested in. She's really interested in true crime and she believes she could solve the murders. And then she turns up in the first book and stuff starts occurring. So I don't know if there's a murder in this book, but I believe we are still gonna be trying to figure out what happened in the 1930s murders. So it has like the murder mystery element in that in that sense. Um, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna read tonight. I kind of feel brain dead. And sometimes after I've read a, like I've spent a whole day reading a book, I just need a break. I just need to sleep and then I can wake up and start another one. So I don't know if I'm gonna end up um, starting this tonight. The um, other book I'm going to start is I search I searched for so long for a murder mystery book on Scribd. Because I've listened to a lot of audiobooks this month, if you don't know, Scribd kind of limits your, um, like what you can listen to during a certain month. So titles start disappearing after a certain point in the, in the month, if you've listened to a lot. So loads of stuff wasn't available to me until in a week. That's when I, my subscription renews. After searching high and low, I found The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. This story follows basically the daughters of famous male classic protagonists. So we follow Jekyll and Hyde's daughters in this series. We have Frankenstein in it. Like the, I, I don't know if she's the daughter of Frankenstein or if she's like a female Frankenstein. I don't know. And I think it's like a YA book and it's set... I don't know, I assume in kind of that era, Victorian era. It says that the group of women must come together, solve the mystery of a series of gruesome murders. Scribd has both the ebook and the audiobook. So I'm gonna switch between them like I did for uh, a mysterious affair of styles, which I've been doing all day today. So yeah, I'm gonna switch between the two. And I just thought it was kind of like an interesting premise. So my hair looks so whack. I've just washed it and it's like, settling in a really weird way. I think that I'm going on a bit like a YA interlude in the middle and then I'm gonna go back to adult afterwards. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna start both of those now. Wish me luck. Thank you. What do you think? Thank you. Thank you everybody. Oh. And I will check in when I've got an opinion on either of them. So I'm about a third of the way through uh, The Vanishing Stair and I'm enjoying it so far. The thing with this series is, if you want to pick up the first one in the series, is that it's a very easy to read book. I feel like I've barely, sorry, you can see all my um, washing that I've put out to dry. <laughs> I feel like I've barely read anything and yet I'm quite far in. And so you just find yourself flying through it. It's such a quick read and it's very cozy as well. You're at a boarding school. I mean, I know murders are happening, but you're at a boarding school and it's a really cool environment that uh, Maureen Johnson has crafted here. Something that was really weird was that, no spoilers, but basically off page between book one and book two, she had to leave the school. So that was never like, it was it didn't happen at the end of the last book and didn't happen at the beginning of this book. But then she's back at the school within 30 pages and everything's resolved. And she's only gone from the school for like a week. It's not like it's a couple months or whatever. She's only gone for a week. And so I don't see why we had her. I don't think it's gonna have that big a deal in the plot. It might do, but I don't see why we had her go home just to come back again. And for it to happen off page, I think I could have understand understood it and like lived, not lived with it, but like it, I wouldn't have been questioning it if it had happened at the end of the last book, but it didn't. It kind of just happened in between them. And I just think it's a bit of a weird choice for it to, the book to start off like that and then for her to be back at the school 30 pages in. But I'm really enjoying where the 1930s storyline is going because we flick back between present day and 1930s. Um, I'm really enjoying where the 1930s storyline is going. I think it's 
taking on a really interesting development and so I'm really enjoying that part of it. The Strange Kates of the Alchemist Daughter, I'm about 20% um, through that. So I've listened to quite a lot because obviously it's like a 13 hour audiobook. I'm enjoying it so much more than I thought I would. I was kind of just listening to it just as something to listen to, but it's actually got a really cool format. By the end of the book, we're gonna end up having like a girl gang um, and they're writing the book. And like one of the girls in particular, we haven't met the one who's writing the book yet, but she's writing the book. So as she's writing the story, the other girls who she's talking about keep cutting in and kind of arguing to each other. Like you come out of the story and it kind of breaks the fourth wall. And I think it's such a cool and refreshing format. I haven't read anything like that in a while. And I think it just adds another element to the story and kind of like, I don't know, makes it cooler. We've just been like with Sherlock Holmes and Watson and it's just... She's adapting these classic characters really well. It's basically reminding me of Stalking Jack the Ripper, but better. So if you read Stalking Jack the Ripper and liked the kind of Victorian era it was set in, but wanting something that was a bit more feminist in like, not the I'm not like other girls way, and it's got a group of girls, I think it's a really, really cool book. I mean, I still want to continue the Stalking Jack the Ripper series, but um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this one so far. I feel like the pace is really good. The characters are really good. So yeah, I'm really shocked at how much I'm enjoying it. Hello everyone. We have a lot to discuss. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to discuss. Okay, I finished. I finished uh, The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I think this series, like, it's just a bit of light mystery. It's YA mystery. It's a very easy way into the genre if you've never read like any mystery. Um, this is a super easy way to get into it and to kind of like dip your toe in the water because there's a lot of other things going on here like friendship, bit of romance. Not a good day, okay? There's a lot of elements here which if you enjoy in your other fiction, I think you will enjoy in this fiction. Here's the thing. We, not to spoil anything, this isn't a spoiler, but we know who the who done it basically for the mystery in the 1930s. We find that out. And A, when I find that out, because we're kind of in these two timelines, like I was like, okay, fine. You know what I mean? It wasn't like when in a mystery, maybe in like the guest list, when I found out who did it, I was like, <gasps> because the whole story has been leading up to it. Our whole story hasn't been leading up to that. So I was like, Fine. I didn't really see all the clues there. There's kind of like two clues that pointed to that person and you were like, ah, okay, whatever. I don't know where this story is going to go in the third one. There's, there's a last book in this series and I don't know where it's going. Surely we've resolved so much. There is not much left to resolve. I would have thought it all would have been resolved in the last book. There was like kind of like a subplot in this book of um, Stevie starting to work for a local professor who's an expert on the 1930s murder and kidnapping case. And I think if that storyline hadn't been added and it hadn't ended in the way it ended in this book, I would honestly be like, where are we going in the last book? And I've heard some bad reviews. I haven't looked at any like bad reviews other than what people I follow on Twitter have tweeted their Goodreads rating. Um, but I've seen some bad ratings for the last book in the series. So I'm a bit nervous that there's not much for us to go into in the last book. Oh, that really hurt my head. <laughs> the Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter. Guys. 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 Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. Check out the labels. <laughs> I only read this book because there was no other mystery books on script audiobooks I could listen to. Like I was, I tried so hard and this was the only one I found. I love it. I love it. I am, I love it. You know you love an audiobook. I, when you really want the physical, the physical, the physical book. I want the physical books and I want the hard covers. That's when you know you're in deep. When you, you're not gonna, you're not gonna settle for the paperbacks. You want to spend your dollar on the hardcovers for a book I have already read. I want it. I want it so bad. This series is so good. Let me tell you why. I'm going to tell you why once I fix my bra strap. The reason this is so good, you will have heard a lot on booktube about Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I have read the first book. I gave it like, I think I gave it three stars. It was it was fine. This book is everything I wanted from Stalking Jack the Ripper. You've got a really strong female 
protagonist. But not only have you got that, you've got a whole girl gang. So you've got all these girls who are linked to the kind of like famous um, scientists from kind of Victorian literature. And at the point of the story I'm in, they've mostly all come together now. And it's just so great to read the dynamics they've got. Each of the girls are very distinct personalities. They don't, um, they don't kind of mesh into each other. They're all so unique and I'm just in love. What a lot of people like in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series is the references to either um, real life figures or other literature. You know, you've got Stalking Jack the Ripper, you've got Houdini, you've got Dracula. Again, this has that with the references to literature. Sherlock and uh, Watson, play a massive part in this story. They are often helping the girls, traveling with the girls, and it's just so cool. And I love Sherlock. I love Sherlock Holmes and Watson. Like it, it's, so it's so good. I, the one thing I would say is I think she relies a lot on our, uh, the rest of our cultural understanding of Sherlock to make up his character. But like, I ain't bothered because I'm more interested in the girls and it's their story. Sherlock's there just kind of to help the story along, um, to use his connections to get them into places, etc. Um, but I'm I'm loving it. Ah, it's so good. I picked this up completely on a whim, and it's one of the biggest surprise. It's one of the biggest surprises I've had. Not much to update you, but I just started the hunting party today, and I'm gonna read some more. I'm like 60 pages in. There's something about this where I'm not enjoying the way she's writing as much as I did on the guest list. And I don't know if I'm reading them too close to one another, but there's something about the characters in, in this so far, and I might learn more about them, but they seem a bit caricature-y. Oh, in both of her books she's writing, in both of her thriller books, uh, mystery books, ah, she's writing very rich, privileged characters, but I just felt like they had a bit more depth in the guest list. I feel like she might, I'm only 60 pages in, but from what I feel like so far, I feel like she picked and choose a very good hierarchy of how much attention she fleshed out characters so there were maybe like three guys who were very baseline you didn't need to flesh them out but you still had the group setting then by having them there and then you had other characters who had a much more development into their personality whereas here we've got quite a big group I don't even know how many of them there are eight or nine and I feel like she's trying to give a lot of them equal yeah equal standing and I'm just getting confused between who is who because there's not much to distinguish them in the guest list they had very strong roles you had the bride you know the plus one you know it's very strong um roles whereas in this you don't so i'm getting a bit confused between who is who but again i'm only 60 pages in so who what am i talking about i should just go read it okay time for my final thoughts so i don't want to talk about it for too long but uh the strange case the alchemist daughter i end up giving it five stars i think it's a great ya novel full of these amazing characters the characters are really what make the story for me it's just a great piece of ya and i loved it i you know i think i've said everything i loved about it already but the ending was really good and i can't wait to see where this kind of family goes in the future it's really a found family story of all these girls who have kind of been put through rubbish by the respective men in their lives so if that's something you'd be interested in definitely go pick that one up as well as well as the guest list of course <laughs> because they are just both brilliant i gave them both five stars the audiobook was great i would really recommend picking up the audiobook if you can because the narrator is really good at doing the accents for the other girls i definitely noticed a difference in my enjoyment between when i was just reading the ebook and when i was listening to the audiobook so i think the audiobook is maybe the way to go with this now <laughs> let's talk about the hunting party can you give me a little bit of space please today when I read the guest list, I thought I found a new favorite author. I'm gonna have to read all of their stuff. I'm gonna be obsessed with this author. I gave this two stars. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> Why me? Why me? This book was just not great. And the main problem I had with it was I didn't actually feel like any of our characters ended up being developed at all. They all felt very surface level to me. I enjoy her writing. I think she's a great author. And so I'm still excited to read anything she puts out in the future. And all the problems I have with this, I can notice, I think there's been a real effort to fix in this. You know, the writing is very similar. The way the the plot develops you know you don't know who's been killed then maybe you find out a key um 
characteristic that gives you a hint, narrows down the party of who could have been killed, and then you find out who's been killed, and then you find out the killer. It happens in both of these, and I like that structure. I liked the structure of this. It was just the story itself, the characters themselves that did not work for me whatsoever. And the thing I liked so much about the guest list was that everyone kind of had these secrets. Everyone had these secrets in this as well, but they were just, it was just rich person secrets. Whereas in the other one, there were very complex things and themes going on. Whereas this one, it was just like a group of friends who all hate each other and you find out why they all hate each other really. And it's just like, not that good <laughs> and there were so many characters who faded into the background the plot i just thought a lot of unnecessary stuff happened and then the ending kind of pissed me off because i just i just felt like the ending was a bit ridiculous we just went down a bit of a ridiculous route for who the killer was why they did it i don't think there'd been enough setting up of it whereas you know with the guest list sorry to keep comparing it but i i do feel like everything that is wrong in this has been improved in this and that's why I feel I feel very confident about reading her books in the future still. In this when the killer was revealed you could see how you had led up to that point whereas I could see the clues that had been supposed to in, you know indicate the ending but I just didn't feel like they were strong enough I didn't feel like they had enough of an impact for you to be like okay yeah a death would happen over that I was just left feeling very underwhelmed by this so I'm really sad about it I'm really sad about it but like I said this is a new favorite book and I everything that is wrong I feel like she's looked at it had probably criticisms on what I think is wrong in this and then developed it and made it better in this but there was just pages and pages and pages of character monologue whereas in the guest list I know I know I shouldn't keep comparing them but like I have to in the guest list there was a lot of conversations and a lot of stuff revealed through conversations with each other, which I thought was kind of clever. Whereas this was just everyone having internal monologues and flashbacks and not enough actually happening in the place that we're at. I just would get so bored when I turn on the page, I'd just be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, it just got so repetitive. And I think the guess this really was helped by having that one character who wasn't a nut job, who, who you know, who maybe had secrets or was linked to secrets, but was kind of the normal person looking in, where there was no, there was not really a normal person looking in on this. So on the whole, in this, it was just over a week I filmed this video during, and I read three physical books and two audio books, which I'm pretty happy with. I had a great time, you know, two five stars, when I'd really been struggling this year to, to read many five stars, makes me so happy. And I really just got into my murder mystery hype. I just enjoyed myself so much. So I think murder mysteries are a great way to break a slump up a bit and to change up your reading. And they're, they're always really quick to read. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I read. And I would love, I, I just want you guys to read the guest list, quite frankly. I think that's our takeaway. And The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, because I, I think it is literally the new and improved version of Stalking Jack the Ripper. I know I keep comparing them and you shouldn't compare books. Like it's like whenever, whenever there's a heist novel and everyone's out here going, oh, it's the new Six of Crows. Like, no, we, we shouldn't be doing that. But at the same time, it irritates me that there is this subpar version of a very similar story. Not, not exactly similar, but very similar in the sense that it deals with science as well. Science is a very strong theme in The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter. And like, it's just not being spoken about. It irritates me. So I definitely would recommend you pick both of those two up. I just want to see you in the comments saying, Megan, I've pre-ordered it at my library. Or Megan, I'm listening to the audiobook on the script right now. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching to the end. Because I know it's a bit of a long one. Because I've edited most of it already. And whew, I'm really putting out some long vlogs at the moment, aren't I? Aren't I? But um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you very, very soon with another video. Bye.